It's been over a week since the last time I shared my investigation with you all, and a lot has gone on in that short time. Not only do I have to tell you about the journal and my last venture on the CWS, but I also have some news regarding what happened to me in the last nine days. None of what I'm going to tell you is good news, and it's going to be the last chapter in this ongoing nightmare of mine, but so you all know right now, there is no happy ending. As I sat in the corner of the room soaked in moonlight, I began to read through the old journal that had been handed by E.B. Flicking through the first 20 pages or so, I could tell that the captain had once been a completely different man than the psychopath I had been told about in countless stories. He seemed like a friendly man, easy to get along with. I could tell that he was excited about his new job on the ship. He said he loved the feeling of being in charge and looking after his crew, and I could tell he meant it. He'd spent page after page describing the feeling that he gets waking up in the morning and breathing in the ocean air, knowing that the rest of his life would be spent at sea. It wasn't until about halfway through the journal that I noticed something that jogged my memory. We docked at Brazil yesterday to drop off cargo at some local businesses. I noticed the bar not too far from the ship as we were loading it into the pier. We all knew we'd end up there for a few beers, so me and the boys decided to go on down as soon as we were done with the half loading. I thought we were only going to have a few, but once you're in the mood, you're in the mood. We'd gone a couple of months without booze and gambling so we ended up there all night and most of the morning too. It was about 2am and I was playing poker with the bartender's son and a couple of his fishing buddies. I just won with a full house when one of the guys said, think we should tell him about the tale? They all looked at me, eyes wide open and smiling as one of them began the story. He said that there is a local myth, a fisherman's tale of a beast called the Casa Trap. It happened about six years ago, and has been a sailor's worst nightmare ever since. A salmon hunter from the nearby village was out fishing one day, looking for his daily produce. He had been out there from the morning until late evening, and he'd felt that he'd finally found enough. It was pitch black, so he decided to make his way home, but in doing so, he heard a loud scream from within the rocks up ahead. At first, he assumed that he was hearing things then it happened again. From the screaming and grinding of the rocks, he felt sure that someone had gotten trapped in the rocks formation. As he neared the rocks, a huge creature stood up right in front of him and shrieked. He turned his boat around as fast as he could but it was too late. The creature had already jumped on board. That's when he ended the story. I asked him, what, is that it? Apparently friends and family of the man noticed a huge change in him. He was quieter, no more wary of everything around him. He was on his boat a lot more too. Not long after though, the man killed himself. For it being the nightmare of every sailor, there wasn't much to the story, but I suppose it was a bit frightening. I thought maybe it was true, but of course it's just a fisherman's tale, so so most likely it's bull crap. Although, if I'm ever out at sea and I hear a scream like that, there's no way I'm going to check it out. After finding that entry in the journal, I was curious to find out more. It wasn't until the last three pages of the journal that I found something that made me shiver. It actually happened. I don't know why it happened to us, but it did. We got caught in a storm last night, so we all had to pitch in. All of us were working hard on the quarter deck, when one of the crew said he heard something strange. We all laughed it off and joked about him for hearing things, but then it happened again. At first, I thought it was the radio. The Beatles were playing, and we were all singing along, so every other sound was drowned out, but not this. We all heard it this time. It was an almost human shriek. 
I immediately thought of the story of the Kazza Trap. But it couldn't have been. It was a myth. I looked over the right side of the ship and could just make out a shadow on some rocks. It looked up at me on all fours, screamed, then dived under the water. Again, we heard the scream, but this time it was from the left side. We all made our way to the other side of the ship, and there it was. It stood up on its hind legs and followed us with its bright eyes. It jumped from the rocks right onto the ship. I don't know how, but it did. We looked it in the eyes as its mouth muttered words under its breath. I couldn't believe it actually spoke. It was some kind of language none of us could understand. It sounded like hundreds of voices merged together, some talking, some screaming. After that, I was stood there, watching my entire crew being ripped apart. I just stood there. I couldn't move. It was so effortless. I watched it punish them, biting, ripping and throwing. After it was all done, it charged at me, pinned me down, screaming in my face. It shoved some of the flesh hanging from its jaw into my mouth. I vomited. I just couldn't take it. It looked me in the eyes and growled. Mine. Afterwards, it charged right down to the bottom of the ship. I could hear the banging and feel the tremors through the steel. I'm on my own in the room with the door locked. I can still hear the voices of my crew. I just don't know what to do. After I'd finished reading the journal, I felt that I could make much more sense of the situation. Not everything was documented, but we had more information and could assume the answers to some of our lingering questions. I thought to myself that the captain had become a part of the ship because the Kazatrap wouldn't allow him to leave. He was almost like a pet. He would lock his crew away every night so that he could save them from being killed. He wasn't a bad person at all. I thought to myself about the song I had heard on the ship. Was he still alive? Was he bound to the CWS and being kept there by the Kazatrap? This is the reason why I had to go back on the ship. I couldn't live with myself knowing that I'd let an innocent man suffer. The next morning I told my granddad that we should leave everything and go back home. He didn't seem to mind. He was old and tired. He'd done to go back to the CWS, and that was enough for him. I drove him back home and told him I'd see him tomorrow. Then, as soon as his door closed, I took the same long journey back to the ship. With sheer determination and no fear, I clambered up the stairs, bought my ticket and made my way into the deck. Once again, it was completely bare. There must have been five people on board at most. I set off down the stairs and into the maze of corridors that I navigated before, but a lot more quicker this time. As soon as I headed into the room and faced the door in the corner, that lack of fear I had ten minutes ago had now been replaced with heavy breathing, trembling and a sickly feeling in my stomach. I slowly made my way over to the door and placed my trembling hand on the lock. Then, just as I pulled on the handle, the huge metal door flung back and hit me in the face. I hit the door almost immediately and fell unconscious, not before I felt a hand grab my leg and drag me down the stairs into the darkness. Afterwards, I awoke in a dirty room lying on an old bed. As soon as I opened my eyes, it was there, just staring at me from the other side of the room. It was on all fours and kept edging towards me, then taking a step back and screaming. I stared at it and felt as if I was staring death in the eye. I'd never been so scared in my life. 
Its jaw jutted outwards, and the same voice that sang the song I'd heard came out of its tattered mouth. The captain had not still been alive. It was the Kazatrap all along. I questioned myself on what it would want from me, but the only thing I could think was that it wanted me dead. It slowly moved towards me, grabbed me by the head and showed me its sharp, yellow teeth. Then, in a voice too dark to be human, it whispered, Mine. After that, it let me go. It just let me walk out of the room and back of the ship. I haven't been the same since, and it definitely wasn't worth it for the few answers that I've gotten. How much truth can you find out about a myth? A legend, folklore, whatever it is. I've been in my house for the past week, trying to get the courage to write it all down because I knew I'd have to go over it all again. It may have let me leave the ship, but it will never leave me alone. I can still hear the voices of a hundred dead men, and sometimes it will appear to me, whether it's outside my window or waiting for me as I turn around. It's always standing there, staring me down. It has only attacked me a couple of times, so I know it doesn't want to kill me. This will be the last time you hear from me. This will be my final update. I thank you all for your time. I can deal with what has to be done from here on out. I finally know what to do. I forgot to mention, however, that I took another look at the captain's journal yesterday. I found a page that was stuck to the back of the book. When I peeled it back from the cover, there was one more sentence scribbled down on the dirty yellow page. Ending it all is my only option. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me.